of y'all watch the game the other night? Who, who are for, for the Heat? How many of y'all are for the Heat? So, yeah. Uh, you may say they suck, but guess what they did? They won. All right, so that, that was all right. I was, that was, I was cheering for the Heat the whole while. Uh, what we want to do today is I want to, I'm not your speaker, but I want to introduce your speaker to you on today. The speaker, the, the man, that young man that will be coming before you is a, a, a person I met probably back in 2008. And I was just really impressed with this young man and, and his ability to motivate me and, and to really talk about what success is. This young man that will be coming today and speaking to you is not just a person that talks about success, but he's a person that is very <laughs> successful. He graduated, now what my phone will be with, right? He graduated from West Point, the U.S., you know who, y'all know what West Point is? What is West Point? Somebody tell me. So, what, what's West Point? New York. And, 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 and it's easy to get in West Point? Yes, sir. He graduated from West Point, and then with a bachelor's in sociology and, and engineering, and then he later went on to get his master's in business administration from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Uh, this young man had a vision when he graduated that he wanted to be a millionaire when he was very young. And, and he achieved that goal when he, he, he achieved that goal. And then he wanted to be a multimillionaire. And he worked on that, and he's achieving that goal. So he's not just a man that just that you uh, just talk about, but a man that is really uh, has done what he's he's doing. He is the owner and founder of Nate Scott's International LLC, and his vision in his company is wellness in the world, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and financial. This young man has, has been a, a, a great motivator for me. He's a great motivator. He can be a definitely motivator for you. I encourage you to listen to what he has and, and to be able to walk away from with something that he can give you. At this time, I'd like to present to you Mr. Nate Scott. Nate. Go ahead and get on your feet real quick. Get on your feet real quick. Let's go. I mean, we're all gonna have a good time. I don't like wasting no one's time. So we're gonna actually let's let's get this thing moving because the bottom line is about you guys. You guys know Eminem? You know the song Lose Yourself? You know what I'm saying? I want you to actually maximize this morning here. I want you to get up in here and be all stiff and stuff. This is all about you. I can promise you this, that if you'll lend me your ear, I will give you my heart. You're going to actually learn some things here. This ain't no classroom setting. This is about making sure that you walk away with here something. Because I know one thing, you got one shot. You got one shot. Who knows this home? Where the lyrics is at? Let me hear somebody. Let me hear somebody. Can you bounce a little? Let's go. Let's go. Y'all want the words? Give me some. Clap it up. Oh, y'all too cool, huh? You too cool? Don't be broke and cool. Don't be a decimal, man. Say it again. So there's leadership. The person that's able to stand up, to step out. You see, because they ain't about making you guys happy. See, I do this for myself. This is about self motivation. This is about encouragement. There's a reason why I was at the game, game seven. Yeah, in the audience. Go ahead and break it. Appreciate it, man. What's your name? All right. We just made some money. See me 
Yeah, of course. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. I should have won the ball game. My goodness. What a lifetime experience. You see, when you go to championship games, you get a chance to do what everybody else is watching. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do right now, go ahead and grab your pens and papers if you're smart enough to actually have a pen and paper, because the bottom line is you came to a session to learn. And I promise you this, I'm going to give you some things that for the person that's the right student, that has the right attitude, that's right here coming to get something out of today, you're going to get some insights directly from me based upon the blueprint that I was able to actually walk out and lead to the results that I aspired for early on. You know, the sad part of it is, it's just you guys as teams. The reality is I wish that whole wall was open because what I'm going to share with you guys here today is going to give you information that's going to allow you to go beyond those things that your parents, your teachers, and everyone else has already been. But see, I'm not going to talk to you about theory. See, I'm a show-me type of guy. That's what it feels for me. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, but again, this isn't about me. So I'm going to ask of you, if you want to be the person that gets something out of this session, I'm going to encourage you to block out everyone else, and you hone in on the information, and you speak up when there are questions that I ask of you. Because again... I'm going to give you information based upon what it is that you want to get out of this. Fair enough? Yes, yes sir. And so when I say stuff like fair enough, again, I, I'm not a motivational speaker. That's not what I do. I'm a teacher. And when I teach, I teach by the walk that I walk. I teach by my swag. I don't teach based upon, like I said, someone else's rules. I'm a very simple, direct guy. And more importantly, and this is just for my personal testimony. I'm a strong child of God, and so because of that, I don't walk timidly. You understand? So let me talk to you a little bit about me, but before I even go into all of that, what I want you to do is, what did you get from my background? What, what was the relevance of that to you? What do you care about me being a, a West Point graduate? with an engineering and sociology degree? What do you care about me having an MBA from George Washington University? What do you care about me having a financial plan background from Georgetown University? What do you care about me making my first million by 32? Somebody, let me ask you, tell me, what do you care about that? What's the relevance of it? What? Money? Go ahead. It shows that you work hard. Okay, what does that have to do with you? I mean, it's like, I can walk in your foot. Okay, somebody else. What does it do with you? I want realness. Again, don't tell, I'm not asking questions for you to tell me what you think I want to hear. Tell me what you really think. What's the relevance of my background and my body have to do with you? And all honesty, please, think, please come up here again, man. Come on up here. <laughs> Quick. You see, that's two times that this young man has displayed to me that he's got it. And so what you will get, again, before you get out of here, you will get my personal cell phone. Okay? You will get some other things directly from me. You just earned that. You just earned a personal contact. All right? Period. So like I said, this ain't very clean and direct for me. I believe in rewarding those people that deserve to be rewarded. I ain't a passing pass type of guy. I'm not the guy that lets you play pop one and that everybody gets trophies. That's not how I was raised. That's not my. That's not my story. And if this was a bit intense for you, just 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 chalk it up for just my background. I'm just a small town guy that grew up in in, in Georgia near Savannah. Small town had an aspiration of playing college basketball. When my scholarship fell through, I turned down my academic scholarships and enrolled in and enlisted in the military. Why? Because I had a vision, I had a dream, I had a goal. And that superseded my going into college and doing what everybody else expected of me to do. And then as soon as I got into college, excuse me, as soon as I got into the military, I immediately enrolled in college courses. 
I immediately started playing sports. And as a result of that, one of my professors knew my company commander, and they came to me and asked me about had I ever considered going to West Point. I never even knew what West Point was. That wasn't something I was exposed to. And so Desert Storm came up, and so that college career that I was working really hard to continue to progress stopped because I had to go and fight for the freedoms that most people take for granted. And so as I walked the perimeter in Desert Storm, I said, Lord, if you allow me to make it back, I'll never waste a day of my life. And then from there, I got the opportunity to go on to go on to West Point, where I did walk on and play basketball, but reality is I walked away from that because I wasn't happy with the grades that I was making. See, about priorities, about focus. Graduated from West Point, where at West Point I was a regimental commander. There are 4,000 cadets, 1,000 per regiment. I was one of the regimental commanders. Graduated from there, engineering and sociology degree. And then there was another pivotal point in my life. In 1996, the week I graduated from West Point, I was introduced to the world of personal growth and development and entrepreneurship via an industry called network marketing. And that one moment in my life forever shaped everything else I did because what it did was it taught me for the very first time in my life about picking up books and going to seminars and being around successful people. To be able to identify people that actually had that which I desired, and then instead of following people that were broke, busted, and disgusted, telling me about theory, about what they were thinking, it taught me to actually say, I can respect what you've done, but let me go seek out the people that have what I want. You feel me? Have you ever seen a movie Pursuit of Happiness? Raise your hand. Have you ever seen a movie Pursuit of Happiness? If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go get that movie. Make it a family night. Because in that movie, there was one critical scene that forever shaped everything else. It actually was something that made me see exactly what I experienced. And it was very simple. The guy came up in a red sports car. Do you remember that scene? Yeah. And then we'll stop this guy and describe that guy that came up in a red sports car. Somebody describe him for me. What was it? Yeah. Rich? Why? Why do you say that? Okay. Red sports car, he said, was an indication of being wealth and having some money. Yeah, young man, go ahead. He was happy. Why do you know that? Smiling. What else? Well dressed. What did that represent? Money. Okay. So what happened, this guy comes up to the race force car, Will stops him, and he asked him, he said, sir, I have two questions for you. What were the two questions? What do you do? Say it. What do you do? What do you do? And how do you do it? And how do you do it? Say it again. What do you do? What do you do? How do you do it? How do you do it? What do you do? What do you do? How do you do it? How do you do it? One more time. What do you do? What do you do? How do you do it? How do you do it? I want you guys to make that a habit. Why was that a smart two questions to ask? He wanted to get where he was. Wow. Wow. So he saw someone that had the elements of success. He dressed right. He had a sports car, right? Description why he was a white male, right? What have you been socialized to see and believe when you see indication of success? Don't fake it. Have you not been programmed and haven't you seen that indications of wealth and success have been white males? Why? Because oftentimes those are the ones that have been taking advantage of the opportunities that were abound. Let me tell you what poor means. Write this down if you've got a pen and paper. Poor. Poor. P-O-O-R. Do you understand? Poor. 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 Here you go. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. Will didn't. Mr. Gardner didn't. What he did? He saw an opportunity to get access to information from someone that appeared to have that which he desired. True or not true? True. Let me ask you a question. You guys saw the game? Great game, wasn't it? What's the likelihood... <laughs> that those guys that were on the basketball court 
put them in a put themselves in a situation and a position to learn from somebody actually that had the game that they had desired to go to get to the league. What's the likelihood that they actually were mentored and played ball with people that were in the game that actually gave them some tools, some skills to get there to where they wanted to be at on the biggest stage of the world? Pretty likely, isn't it? Person just walked here talking about imitation. You know, I'm a father. I've got an eight and a seven year old. Beautiful young lady named Nadia. And a young man that's developing that likes to want that that, that intends or, or has these traits of wanting to be an architect, like my young man back there that's helping me with the camera. Let me tell you, every day as I do everything that I do, there's not a moment, there's not a word that comes out of my mouth, there's not a swag that I display, there's not a way that I care of myself that I don't think about my daughter and my son. Because of imitation. If there's going to be a role model, it's going to come here. And I don't have to be the be end all of it. What I've got to do is I've got to make sure I equip them with the right way of thinking. And so my desire today, young people, is to make sure that you have the right idea of how to think. I ain't going to be giving you no, no scripted things because I don't know your life. And I don't know what you desire. But I promise you this, just like with my children, if I teach you how to think versus what to think, that you can be successful. And let me tell you where that theory comes from. Because as an infantry officer, a ranger, someone that was responsible for taking young men and women and actually putting them in harm's way, doing it in real world situations, I had a responsibility to develop people. But you know, it goes back a little bit further. As a player that played quarterback in football, I had a responsibility to make sure I got the repetition to make sure I knew how to perform on the field. As a point guard in basketball, I needed to make sure that I understood the game enough to have the skills to actually go out on the basketball court so that when the ball went up, Leadership could actually prevail. You understand me? So here's the question I have for you. I like to say, I'm, all, I'm always about giveaways, 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 giveaways. 1996, no, excuse me, 2001. I walked into a room full of happy people. I'm going to bring it back to that movie, Pursuit of Happiness, Happy People. So I asked Will, ask them, what do you do and how do you do it? What's the thing? What do you do? How do you do it? All right. After he asked that question, the guy said, yeah, stockbroker. Any of you guys know about stockbroker? What do you know about that field, stockbroker? Yes. Good with numbers and? Huh? Selling bids. Stocks is what he says is his occupation. But in evidence, it's about dealing with money, right? How many of you guys in here know how to read stock tables? Okay, yeah, a couple of you. Well, don't feel bad because most of the adults don't. You understand? Financially illiterate is most of society. Financially illiterate. So my encouragement to you is that if you are in a, let me ask you a question. If you go to a foreign country, what's going to be your biggest barrier? Language. Not speaking the language, right? Okay, so how about... What's your big, what do you find your parents and everybody stressing out? And even what you're thinking about in the future with what you plan to do with your, your life, what do you think your biggest concern is? Money, right? Money's like a foreign language, oh, excuse me, like a foreign land. And it has a language to it. Doesn't it make sense right now to start learning the language? Huh? If it's the thing that's going to dominate your whole life, doesn't it make sense to right now start thinking about that thing that is going to consume you for the rest of your life? Doesn't it? So learn the language. Because if you learn the language, then you can overhear conversations. You can actually participate because you understand what's being said. The reason that we have the conditions that we have is because people don't understand the language. Does that make sense? And then the guy says, no, you don't, right? Because Will says, you, I guess you got to go to college for that. How many of you guys have been raised at college to be in all of them? Now, here's the thing. And again, you're talking, it would be different if I didn't have the degrees. See, nobody can say jack about, I know what the meaning of education is. And I've done it at tier one school. So hear me and hear me loud and clear. The thing that's going to determine your degree of success 
is this thing. What's in your heart? What are you passionate about? What do you want to create as a life? So no differently than if you were planning to make a trip from here to New York, you got to first know where you want to go to. Does that make sense? You got to know what destination point you're trying to get to. And then from here, you then decide on what the right path is. Does that make sense? Yes? That path then can be laid out based upon what your end state is, your desired outcome. The guy says, no, you don't have to go to college. Because see, if he had stopped right there with his own limited beliefs, he wouldn't have went any further. But thankfully, someone that knew something actually said, no, man, that, don't have that lie in your head. You ain't got to go to college. You got to be good with people and good with numbers. How early can you begin to learn to be good with people? Pre-K, right? <laughs> If you got a little sister or a little brother and you've been popping them upside the head, your mom and dad probably told you about that, right? <laughs> so it begins immediately. Be good with people. And then be good with numbers. Master your basics. Master your basic mathematics. Because I promise you, if you can learn how to do those basic numbers, your game has completely shifted. And the guy gives him that insight, and then what happened was, Will was stupid enough to believe him. He was stupid enough to believe him. And he pushed all his chips in, and he actually went all out. But before that happened, the guy looked back, and people were walking down the steps. Do you remember that scene? And what did he say? He said, they all look so damn happy. Why couldn't I feel like that? How many times do you look around and see people's faces, adults' faces, and you look at them and you say, I don't want to feel like that? Not, I don't want to look like that, I don't want to feel like that. Because you can see all about them, right? So today, my desire is actually to just give you that simple blueprint. So again, here's the, the step. I want you to go watch that movie and I want you to see it with those lenses that I just now gave to you. Fair enough? I got two books in my hand. The one says the top 10 distinctions between dream fulfillers and dream killers. So tell me a distinction. What's a dream fulfiller versus a dream killer? Yes, sir. A dream fulfiller is someone that follows through and completes their dreams while writing them down and doing what they say to a dream killer is someone that just talks about it, talks about them and takes the initiative to go and complete their dream that they so forth said. Okay, how about another one for dream killer? Yes, sir. Speak up. Haters. Okay. Haters, right? How many of you guys got haters? I promise you, I promise you, the more successful you become, the more haters you acquire. So here's a, little, here's a little metric for you to personally evaluate your personal situation is this. If you're a part of the in crowd and you're doing everything because of everybody else and you don't have nobody that's kind of looking at you and trying to hold you back and talk you down, then you're probably not in the 2% club and you're probably not in, on the path to be in the 2% club. And when I say the 2% club, I'm talking about 2% that actually controls 98% of the wealth. There's a reason why LeBron James said after they won the championship, hey. why he basically went off when someone asked him about how did he think and feel about everybody that was. He said, hey, listen, I, I wasn't even supposed to be here. I'm just a little kid from Akron, Ohio. I'm, every time I walk into the locker room and I see James at number six, I'm blessed. So, everybody else. Kick rocks. Like I said, imitation. Imitate those people that have that which you desire. And you got to understand, there are traits. There are consistent traits of successful people. And I'm here to tell you today that you can actually start studying 
successful people so that you can adopt some successful traits so that you can be in position to have a successful future in whatever you desire to do from your heart. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So from here, dream fulfillers, dream killers. Dream fulfillers are fully engaged. Dream killers are only enrolled. Some of you guys are just enrolled in here, and I've already had one person that's been fully engaged. That's what separates. I can see them immediately. Dream fulfillers build a life. Dream killers make a living. Ooh. Dream fulfillers walk through the valley. Dream killers pitch a tent in the valley. Woe is me. Life is this. Oh, man, the man. And everybody's trying to hold me down. And man, you see, man, this is what they did to me. Either you can make excuses or you can make money. You can't do both. That's it. So who wants this book? Who wants this book? Who wants this book? I tell you, I know when people want something. Who wants this book? But see, you know, life is really about certain people. And then there's a distinction between those that want and those that don't. See, I, will, I know what you believe by what you do. I know what your belief is by what you do. Not by what you... That's what the world is made of. And so when you get strong enough where you can actually walk in who you are, and you ain't got to do all this, well, see, again, that's because you get to the point where you earn it. See, there's a uniform to every game. When I was in the military, I had a uniform. When I was a CFO of a company that was 155, 185, 100 as fastest growing companies, I had a uniform. And I was clean. Still got those in there, too. Now, you know, I, do, I pull them out every time somebody gets so cocky with me and have an edge about them and so arrogant and looking at me because they see me walking like this. Then I have to go pull out the uniform and I have to slap them around with it just to say, I, what do you want to match? Yes, West Point degree, engineering and sociology. <clears throat> oh, master's? Oh, yeah. MBA, George Washington University. Oh, no, oh. Finance planning, Georgetown University. Oh, money? Oh, first million at 32. Oh, military? Oh, enlisted soldier, then a West Point graduate, then an Army infantry. Whoa! Ranger. Oh, license, 766. Life ever very newbie. Mortgage and real estate. Oh! Author, speaker, coach. But only when it's relevant because someone sometimes just has to be shown because of what they see and how they judge. But you got to earn it. And so what I'm telling you is this. It's a simple process. The first thing is you got to begin with the end in mind. This is when you want to take notes. Begin with the end in mind. I'm encouraging today that you actually take the time at this stage, make this to be a defining moment for you where you actually start thinking about what it is that you want from the future. Okay? And I want you to do that on pen and paper. Pen and paper. The next thing is I want you to seek out somebody that has this what you desire in lifestyle. Not about degrees, not about job. I want you to start getting back to the point where you actually are a dreamer. Because here's the deal. Most people die 25, wait to be buried at 65. Somebody tell me what that means. They die at 25, wait to be buried at 65. Yes, sir. Lost open their dreams. Okay. Top 10 distinction between winners and whiners. Winners and whiners. Winners find a way. Whiners find an excuse. Winners can have what they want. Whiners want what they cannot have. Ooh! Winners take responsibility. Whiners play the victim. At West Point, we have four responses. Yes, sir. No, sir. No excuse, sir. Sir, I do not understand. My kids right now, boy, y'all know. <laughs> Nadia, why did you do this? Well, Daddy, see what? Nadia. 
Why are you giving an explanation? Nadia, did you do this or did you not? Either it's yes, sir. <laughs> no, excuse, no, sir. No excuse, sir. I'm sorry, I'm not understand. It's not about an excuse. Excuse to prevent you from moving forward. Winners enjoy life's journeys. Winners put their joy in the destination. What I'm saying to you is this. There are going to be peaks and valleys in your life. There are going to be tough times. But before I leave out of here, I'm going to give you four statements that I promise you that if you start internalizing these four statements, it's going to set you up for success. It's going to set you up for success for the rest of your life. How much time do I have? Huh? I'm out of time, boy. Yo. Well, with that said, let me just go ahead and say this last thing. And, uh, and I'm going to be around, and I'll definitely encourage you to, to uh, connect with me. Um, who on Facebook? Okay, I'm on Facebook. Nate Scott is my name. Um, huh? Okay, yeah. So I'm going to give you these four statements, and I want you guys to go ahead and get on your feet as we close this out. Um, the reality is this. My personal vision and my personal mission is to create a $10 million endowment fund to foster personal growth and development and entrepreneurship. Because I believe in giving back. And my giving back is not giving handouts, it's about hand ups. It's about helping you to do what I've already done in the learning piece. And so to that end, uh, if you have any desire to become someone that actually walks out their full destination and, and grow in that level, then I want to encourage you to, uh, to, uh, to, to have a conversation with me so that I can at least uh, tell you how you can actually you know, stay in touch. Um, my vision is wellness in the world, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and financial. Because I've never seen a broke person that could recover and I've never seen a sick person get a bunch of products and services and actually get well. I believe that a person's whole life has to work. And it's got to be integrated. And so that means here, thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. And I want to be able to teach you some real, I want you to start, if you don't get anything from me today, I want you to right now make a point of investing in yourself and your knowledge around those things that are really important to you. So, repeat after me. Dramatic wealth is a virtue. 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 I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. That will help me to achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. That will help me achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. That will help me to achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. That will help me to achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. I'm open and receptive to any ideas and people. That will help me to achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. That will help me to achieve my goal of dramatic wealth. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. And I love sharing it with those in need. And I love sharing it with those in need. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. And I love sharing it with those in need. I love sharing it with those in need. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. I am worth one hundred thousand per month. And I love sharing it with those in need. I love sharing it with those in need. Through perseverance, I am creating. Through perseverance, I am creating. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. Through perseverance, I'm creating. Through perseverance, I'm creating. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. Through perseverance, I'm creating. Through perseverance, I'm creating. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. The financial dynasty I so richly deserve. I want to thank you each of you that have engaged. Congratulations on taking this very first step. I commend you.